something that we've done um, in the last 12 months is, is make an investment in a direct drill um, and this has helped us um, reduce our fuel input costs dramatically um, not only that um, I'm, I am quite sold on the idea of, of how this drill works um, it's very versatile and you can do most things with it as in you can drill with the front and the back coulters or just the front coulters and use the back coulters for another seed or a companion crop or use both hoppers I mean this this does come as a three hopper version as well but this is just a two um, so I generally put seed in the front and fertilizer in the back hopper um, and you can direct direct that straight into both venturis at the back so it's mixed together so there's the seed and fertilizer going to both front and back um, but it just gives you that versatility if you're drilling something different at the front to the back you can go deeper at the back on the back coulters using the depth adjuster there so you can run them deep and run the front ones um, quite shallow which, which we've done quite a lot of this time with co cover cropping uh, the small seeds I've put in the back uh, coulters and, and, and I've used the front coulters for, for beans and, uh, and it's worked quite well because you can uh, A you're regulating the depth of the seed but also so, so how it works and it's quite unique really there's no springs as such on this drill it's all hydraulic so what you do you, you keep your hydraulics pumping and you set the hydraulic pressure so I'm normally running at about 30 bar uh, and you can up it to 40 if, if it's dry conditions but it's normally about 30 bar and that keeps 30 bar of pressure to each individual coulter um, and I don't know whether you can see it but there's a little a little round just on each coulter. I'll unfold this in a minute so we get a better look at it but it keeps ultimately it keeps every single coulter equally pressured onto the floor so you don't get deviations if you if you've got a tram line that's got a slight divot in it or you're up against the hedge everything has got equal pressure and, and it just means that the seed comes up so uniform in the field you, you've not got bits coming through early or late it, it's all it's all there at the same time and, and and we really do find that that's it's made significant improvements now I haven't got this pressurized up but what you do obviously the seed drops into your slot there and you can alter this the the air pressure in this airbag from the cab and um, basically just fill this fill the slot in and it's at a slight angle and you can set that bias on there so you can put you'd be more or less aggressive on it um, but you can you basically you could actually get away with not rolling the field um, so there's just less and less disturbance to the soil um, and equally less and less passes in the field um, which is saving compaction and also saving fuel but also um, it's minimising it's minima minimising the effect of black grass virtually because you're literally only moving the soil where you need to move it um, and another advantage that we've found with this drill is that <coughs> and again I'll unfold it again in a minute but each, each coulter has got an air diffuser on it um, and basically it only blows the air literally to the top of the coulter and then the last bit is dropped in by gravity um, and the little diffuser just lets the air go off a little bit like a vacuum cleaner really um, and, and you see just drops out into the coulter so you're not physically blowing the seed into the groove and potentially blowing it out of the groove that you're making in the floor um, and that's really advantageous for, for small seeds as well um, 
so so yeah there's a lot to this drill and there's a lot that you have to get your head around you can just see the diffusers there but there's a there's a lot to get your head around but once you you set up on on it it, it really does come into its own uh, and it's not a drill where you go into every field and the settings are all the same you know it's like anything you, you, you adjust to the conditions and and there's no two fields the same um, so just walking around here I mean I spec this drill with wide tires on the back and that's on 750s um, and, and I had it on that because this is directly behind you behind your coulters and it can in, in wet conditions can smear uh, the top of the soil and uh, and stop the seed coming through ultimately but when you let these tyres down the imprint on the floor is, is so minimal uh, I think we did trials with it um, well Russell's did trials with it and, and the weight on the, the back wheels when it's in drilling drilling mode is 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 very low it's it's literally just over a ton i believe and and for a, for a big big drill like this that's potentially holding three ton in the hopper that's very very low to be fair um and and another beauty of this drill is that you don't actually need the power um to pull it um that they recommend 220 upwards um but you could pull it with a 220 horsepower tractor um, however uh, as you can see we've got 400 on it but not because it needs it it's because we've got the tractor um, but, the, but the advantages to us with that is it it doesn't particular I can't say that it uses a particularly large amount of fuel because I can shut it down um, and it's literally only ticking away but um, it's on 710 tyres which I've obviously let down quite considerably um, and you've got no wheel slip um, you take all the weights out of the wheels there's no wheel slip the tractor hardly knows it's got the drill on and it's just really boss of it so if you're ever on a hill it, it's not struggling I think I think if you were ever in the situation where you were struggling to pull this drill because it was relatively damp conditions or you got some slippy straw I think it would marl the top of the soil so that that tire it would literally marl it and then then if the, the impact that that has on that then the, the coulters that are in line with with all the wheels essentially because the, the you know the drill wheels follow as well the impact that has is is quite great and you end up with six meter tram lines going up the field if you're not careful so um, that's one of the reasons why we put that on but but also because we've got it as well you know it's there it's a good pulling tractor um, and if you've got the right operator on it I mean I drive it myself but if you've got the right operator on it it, it doesn't use it twice the amount of a 200 horsepower tractor um, yes it's going to use a little bit more because it's heavier but but I think the advantages outweigh the disadvantages on that one personally that's just my opinion on it so it's, it's dead easy to use this drillers uh, I'm running this through the isobus uh, you can have a screen the drill came with a screen um, if, you, if you're moving from one tractor to another quickly or you've, you've got an emergency and the tractor hasn't got isobus or whatever uh, so so it, but I just prefer to have all the guidance and everything through one screen you know there's no clutter in the cab as such uh, apart from the um, literally just I haven't got that plugged in at the moment but you literally just go up and down with your pressure for your um, for your little roller wheel behind your coulter uh, and that can be done on the move so if you're on a tough headland or you just know that, that part of the field is is tougher you just wheel it in a little bit more uh, it puts puts more pressure on on, on the following wheel um, but yeah I don't know if you can see that properly but, um, so we've got I've named that seed that's the front hopper that's slightly bigger I don't know what capacity exactly but slightly bigger and that's that's the back hopper and I've, I've named that one fertilizer I've only been putting DAP on in the autumn with that um, 
small amounts uh, and now in the spring I, I will be putting uh, fertiliser down the spout as well um, on spring oats uh, just, to, just to give it that kick start and get everything with the early vigour um, so yeah dead easy to use it, I, um, you can do mapping and variable rate seeding if you're Omni you can do all your yield mapping and, and lay maps into here for for variable rate seeding which then in turn can be used for uh, variable rate fertiliser applications as well but, but yeah you can put any calibration factor in or you just remember your calibration factor if you're swapping from one product to the other um, you've got there's, there's several different uh, metering uh, flutes as it were that you can put in you've got deep ones for beans really shallow ones for fine seeds and just a general one for, for, for general cereals and you just you just make them up according to whatever you want to put on so if you, like I'm going to go on with 200 kilos of, of, of seed and, uh, for the oats and those of fertiliser now I've only put one flute in the back of that and spaced it out with spacers because obviously the metering system will be going so slow if you had if you had a full set of flutes in there um, so I've just put the one in just to keep that metering system moving that little bit faster uh, to stop the stop the fur bridging up um, so yeah that's it really it's it's very easy to set up one button to calibrate outside um, so yeah I can't I can't speak highly of it enough from that point of view and obviously some of the eagle eyed viewers will notice that we've still have got the Varda stud in the shed because it you know it's not worth selling it and I've still got a new combination dish drill there ready to go when when the weather doesn't permit this one to go but I think that's the way the climate's gone these days uh, you've got to have the armory in the shed uh, for every event um, and it just gives me that flexibility as well you know if it does come wet I can go with a combination drill um, on cultivated ground or we can run two drills run the vast side as, as well as this one um, which obviously wouldn't be direct drilling um, but, but this this one here just gives us that flexibility just to go straight into stubble or straight into subsoiled worked ground um, so yeah it just get, it's very very flexible so here you can see the culture arrangement uh, more clearly now that it's unfolded this uh, this here is 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 on like a trapeze so it's got several pivot points um, and you just set your pressure from the cab um, and the little ram literally just pushes down and all these are linked together so that's why you get your equal pressure on each coulter um, which is key to its, its success um, so yeah it pushes down pushes down until it goes onto its depth regulating wheel which again you can see you, you just that's deeper, that's more shallow and I've had it, you can see I've had it there for winter beans you could go even deeper if you want it, and you know you're pulling it then but uh, I can comfortably put beans in between 4 and 6 inches um, which is incredible really the, the, the discs are like razors on these um, so yeah that's that. That's key to its success and this, this airbag here like I mentioned earlier you just set that according to what pressure you want in it and it just literally wheels it in behind these are the diffusers so it's pressurized to this point here um, and then you if you feel that when it's when it's running you've got wind coming out of there it, it literally just drops it down there by gravity and um, comes out the orifice at the bottom just, uh, just there um, now as you can see when I finished in the autumn it was damp conditions so that's when you do get a little bit of build up of stubble in between the disc and and that's when things start you, you, 
can start requiring more horsepower very easily. Um, however, <coughs> when the conditions are dry, you can really get some work done with it. Um, now, for those of you that, that are used to driving Vardastad drills, this is nothing like a Vardastad drill. You can't expect to go 12, 14k um, and expect to do the same job because at that point there you will start to cultivate the soil and the, the key to direct drilling is literally not moving any soil at all if you, if you can help it um, particularly if you're in a black grass situation or a high weed situation um, so I normally sit between 8 and 10k depending on the conditions and at 6 meters you know you still get in 80, 100 acres a day done if you're well organised um, but it's no good thing of going into the field and, and oh I'm going to get 150 acre done today because I want to and do 14k because it just absolutely defeats the object of direct drilling really in my opinion you know you just there's far too much disturbance these wheels haven't got time to touch the floor properly and, and the following wheels with the serrated tips on they just rip the soil up basically and it looks like a cultivated field when you finish with it um, so yeah just moving round you, you've obviously got the front metering system there double piped all the way from the front obviously and then you've got the back and you've got the slides there that you can just slide it off the metering system out if you've got an issue with the metering system um, now it's a pressurised tank so that is your pressure, that's in Pascal, so that normally reads very low. Now if, you, if the needle's really high it means that the tank seal at the top isn't sealed or you've not shut the lid properly. Um, so yeah, the idea of pressurised is so that it, uh, it doesn't need agitation as such. Um, So if you're running this tractor on a high skid unit, uh, a big tractor, sorry, if you're running this drill on a high skid unit tractor, what you have to do is take chocks out of the, the rams here. I'll just leave these hooked over this pipe here just for ease if you need some more in the field. But, but yeah, you just take those out and basically you leave these rams all the way down. I've got it up at the minute because I'm just showing you what's what, but you leave it all the way down in the field and it's, it's your coulters that move up and down rather than the whole drill these these unless you're reversing into a rough corner I very rarely pick these up um, just to say blocking any coulters but um, but yeah you've got to allow travel on the coulter going down so if that makes sense so if you're going across a field you imagine you've got a, a ridge in the middle of it you've got to allow enough travel going down so if you're not going to have travel going down you need to take a chock out basically um, and if you've got if you, if you feel like your drills too close to the floor and when you're picking up at the end uh, and your colts are way too close to the floor um, you need to put a chock in basically that's that's what that's all about and likewise your tire pressures make a lot of difference to that i noticed you know we, we let these down to i think they're nearly 10 psi now but the, uh, it only has to sit two or three inches closer to the floor and it makes so much difference when you're full of seed. A um, lot of pipe work but it's just the nature of the beast. I think they are working on a, I think you can get it as an eight meter, I'm working on a 12 but it's all bolt on of all apparently they tell me, not that I'd be looking at a 12 um, but it's there it's just plug and play if, if that's what you want um, and yeah you can get a fair bit of tonnage in that hopper I haven't had it full yet but it's, it will it will do this spring no doubt if it's dry enough um, and, and yeah the um, 
that is really versatile that is it, it just gives you that flexibility to put seat to the front or different seats to the front different seats to the back or mix them which is what I will be doing shortly 